Good morning, happy Saturday, or whatever day you're watching this video on. Welcome to LQ Art, I'm LQ. This is my third how-to step-by-step painting video. Um, before we get started, I have to remind you to like, subscribe, and share. That way, if you like what you see, you can get notified for upcoming videos. So today we are going to do a painting of Hartman's Rock. So I was inspired by this super cool landscape photo that my talented cousin, who is an awesome artist and photographer, her name is Tracy Schwartz, she took this photo of Hartman's Rock um, in Colorado. And if you would love to follow her Instagram, it is called Schwartz and Shorts. She's awesome, I know. Um, so you can see more of her photography. It is beautiful, it is amazing. I would highly recommend following her just simply to see her art and her work. It is on, on point. So I will link her Instagram below in the comments or I will just write it write it down so you can um, know the exact spelling of it later. So let's get started. We can start off with the supplies and I will kind of make a list of the supplies too of like prices where you can get it or you can find it so we don't have to spend a ton of time on that during the video. Um, that way we can just kind of get started, right? Um, but you're gonna want a jar of water like usual. I like a glass jar. It's just way less easier to knock over than a plastic cup or something lighter. Um, paint brushes. I like something small, medium, or large. I have a couple, um, couple varieties today. Um, I think this might be like size three-fourths. Paint brushes have numbers or are numbered. Um, I don't know exactly what these are, but I think this one might be a 10. You know what? The noon uh, tornado siren is going on right now. It's April in Wisconsin, so I'm going to pause the video until that's done so you don't have to listen to that. <laughs> okay, cool. So I think the siren is done. Anyways, um... This actually says it's a size 8, so I have a 3 fourths brush for my large brush, a number 8, a number 10 for my medium brushes. This, I don't see a size on it, I think it has too much paint on it, <clears throat> but um, I don't know, maybe like a 1 or a 2, if you compare it to my fingers, it's like very small. Um, some brush sizes go down to like zero over ten or like you know like tiny 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 we don't have to go that small but really whatever you're comfortable with to basically do um some outlines some of these like black outlines so however comfortable you are with that <clears throat> however steady your hands are just use your best judgment right again you can use paper plates for your paint palette or the tops of a, um, I always forget what these are called for some reason. Tupperware. It's a hard word for my brain, I guess. Tupperware container. Um, paint. We have black, white, yellow ochre is the specific shade of yellow that I prefer to use for this, but it's your painting do what you want. You could use whatever shade of yellow you want, but this was the specific color that I wanted to use for uh, <clears throat> for the least amount of mixing and the least amount of work for this photo. Um, and then we have for our pink, you can buy a pink color um, or you can do, I just have like a straight up crimson red. You can mix some white into that, make a pink. Classic ultramarine blue cobalt blue and that's it oh no that's not it I also used like a an umber or a sienna for the brown 
I didn't add that to my pile. I will go get that later. No, I'm going to go get that now. Okay, to be honest, I don't remember what I used for the brown, but it was either burnt umber, burnt sienna, or just used like straight up brown. I don't know. We'll see. Anywho, so if you take a look, this is what it's going to look like. So it's a super simplified version of what this is. So we're just taking, um, we're just simplifying it into chunks. So we have a chunk here, which is yellow, a chunk here for the clouds that we can do some highlights and darks on, a chunk here in the sky, which is pink, some blues, and then two sets of mountains, which is a dark brown, a light brown, and then we have the trees and the moon and that's it so we don't have to go all like fancy schmancy with all these details and divots in the clouds I mean you totally can and that would be awesome but um for something like this that's just kind of like a beginner's painting um especially if you're doing a paint and wine night and you're going to involve some alcohol um I don't know, maybe you don't really want to try super hard. I don't really want to try super hard when I drink wine, but that's just me. So um, that's that. It's still going to look cool. So it's just going to be shapes, blending, some highlights, some shadows, some darks, and that's really all you need. Super fun, super easy. Okay, enough of me rambling. We're going to get started now. Okay, so first things first, we always want to start with the farthest most background, of course. So that's going to be the yellow. The clouds are technically in the foreground. So we're going to do the yellow, the, um, the pink. Basically, we're going to do the yellow and the sky, maybe the mountains. And then we'll come in, do the foreground more, such as like, the trees, the moon, the clouds, the details, and then we're done. Cool. So for the yellow, we want to get this nice yellow over here. So we're going to mix it with white and the yellow over. So I'm going to take a squirt like the size of a quarter of yellow that was or of white that was actually a lot of white you really don't need a lot remember you can always add more paint um can't really take it away and maybe for the yellow i'll do like not a quarter like a dime size So I'm going to mix with my number 10 brush or my medium brush and take like a scoop of white, put it somewhere over here on the palette and like a little scoop of the yellow, mix it in. We want to get that like nice faded yellow. So that's still too dark for my liking. I'm going to take another scoop of white. So you're just going to slowly add in until you find what you like. Kind of like that maybe a little more white though but it's really up to you it's your painting yeah let's go with that so you can use your large three quarters brush or you can use your medium brush honestly i always just paint with a medium brush because i feel like it covers a good amount and i also have kind of like bald like this without hair um and you also have a lot more control with it than a large brush. So kind of like the best of both worlds here. So you're just going to come down like, you're going to want to paint to the end of the clouds because you're going to paint over the yellow with the clouds. So maybe like, 
maybe like a fourth way down your canvas. So you can measure this with a ruler and a pencil, um, but or you could just eyeball it. I'm just gonna eyeball it. Um, bring the camera a little closer. Mm, I don't know, like right there. Remember to always paint the edges. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it like this. I'm gonna paint the top because you don't wanna have to remake your color just to paint the edges at the end. That can be really annoying. Let me tell you. And this is a sky, right? So we don't want it to be like one solid color. Skies are not like that. So it's okay if it's messy. It's okay if it's layered. We want some lights and darks in there. We want some texture. We want some brush strokes, right? Cool, you get it. So I'm kind of just doing this a little bit fast for the video, but remember to always pause the video, do your thing, and then push play when you're ready. You don't need to rush. Do your thing. Okay. Cool. So I think it's actually a little bit dark for my liking, so I'm going to take this extra white that I have. See, like, that was way too much yellow that I put on my canvas, so, or on my palette, I mean. So less is more. You can always add more. So I'll just save this for when I do the moon, because that's the same color that I use. But even for the moon, that's going to be a lot. But you know what? Totally okay. All right, cool. So there's my yellow. Um, I'm going to pause the video and dry this with a hair dryer so I can paint the clouds over it and so I can paint the layer of pink and blue in it without getting the yellow smudged in it. So I would suggest pausing the video, painting your yellow, and pausing it with a hair dryer and then coming back. Hello. Um, so it's all dry. My yellow is all dry. Now we're going to work on this pink section. We're actually going to paint pink like right up to the yellow and dry it and then that way we can overlap when we do the clouds, okay? So um, let's see. I'm going to say maybe like two inches um, of pink we're gonna paint down. You can kind of just, you can use a ruler or you can just kind of eyeball it, whatever you're most comfortable with. I'm just gonna eyeball it. Um, so again, I'm gonna say like a, maybe like the size of a dime of um, red and the size of a dime of white. And if we need more white, we'll just keep adding in. And you can rinse um, your number 10 brush or your medium brush and dry it with a paper towel. Get it all nice and clean so we don't get a ton of yellow into the red and white. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so I don't have the pink. I'm just going to make it. So um, again, I'm just going to take some of my white, put it off to the side. Tiny dab of the red because the red's going to go a long way because it's the darkest out of the two. Mm -hmm. So we're going to slowly add more white. I think I'm cool with that. Yeah. So, um, we're gonna go, like I said before, maybe like two inches down. And 
going right up to the yellow. Your yellow should be dry. So like this line is going to be covered up by the clouds, so it's okay if it's kind of, I don't know, messy for lack of a better, lack of better words. I'm actually going to put some just like straight up white in here to make it a little lighter and give it some some more sky and layered effects. But if you want it nice and solid, that's totally up to you and that is beautiful. I'm just going back and forth using both sides of my brush. And we're getting the sides. And if this bottom part seems like pretty messy, that's okay too, because um, we're going to overlap that with um, kind of like a periwinkle-ish white color. Cool. So we're not going to dry this right now because we're going to kind of blend this canvas blending. It's called wet on wet canvas blending, blending wet paint with white paint on the canvas. Um, so as you can see, right here kind of goes from pink to white to blue. Um, so I'm going to rinse my brush so um, we can do kind of this white blue color. Okay, so I'm going to use this cobalt blue. You could also just use any blue you have and add a bunch of white to it, like we did with the, um, the red and the white. I'm gonna do maybe like a tiny bit, like the size of a dime or half of a dime. And then, oops. And then uh, a dime to a quarter size of the white. And again, you're gonna scoop some white Put it on a separate area and slowly add in your cobalt blue or your whatever blue you're going to use. And I want this pretty light to begin with, so. Oops. So now I'm just going to kind of overlap it with this pink because I want some of this pink in with this blue. Move this closer so you guys can see what's going on. Yeah. So we want some of the pink to blend down into this blue. We want some of the blue to blend it up into this pink. And this part's pretty light. We don't need a ton of layers right here because in the picture it's a pretty pretty light blue sky. It's basically just kind of the transition from this pink up here to um, this dark deep blue down here. Okay, that's good enough. So now, so now we're gonna get to this like super beautiful deep blue. This is we're gonna you're gonna come in with your ultramarine blue or your darkest of your dark blues. And you can kind of see later on we're gonna hide. It's called hiding the hue, where you hide. Um, you kind of tie the painting all together with 
with these other colors in your painting, you kind of um, hide, hide that hue of that color into other little secret places um, to tie the painting all together. So I'm hiding this blue hue into the clouds to kind of tie the painting together. So again, I'm just going to take like a dime size of this dark blue here and mix it with a little bit of white and we're going to canvas blend down to that blue, um, maybe like two inches again. So I'm just going to take some of the blue, put it off to the side, add a little tiny scoop of this white mix it in and we're going to start there so on top of this white or excuse me light blue not white blue we're going to start to overlap that adding some blue and then I'm dipping my paintbrush in the white and going over it making sure to get the sides going over it to make sure I can get that smooth transition nice um, blending sometimes if we don't add the white in we're gonna get this like super grainy stuff like this on the canvas. Some people might say, well then add water. Well, sometimes that doesn't always work because it's not watercolor, it's acrylic. The more water you add, the thinner your paint is gonna get, and then it kind of dries. You don't have much control over how it dries, in my opinion. You're just gonna kind of, kind of go back and forth. I think the more paint you have on your brush for wet on wet canvas blending is better. And on the bottom, we're just gonna do some really super dark blue because we want that contrast between the super light blue and the super dark blue. Beautiful. Then again, like the bottom, if the bottom of this dark blue is kind of grainy, that's okay because um, I'll be kind of going over it with the, um, the mountain or the hill or the rock, the rock, it's Hartman's Rock. Okay, if you can see where it was like kind of grainy up top, I just filled it in with white, covered it up so it was like smoother transition. If it doesn't look exactly like the picture or the original painting that I did, that's totally cool because remember, those are just our inspiration. Like how boring is that? if we just all painted the same exact picture, you know? Like, that's not the point. <clears throat> okay, great. So now, um, I don't really think we need to dry this with a hairdryer because um, now we're going to do this brown. If we go over this blue with the brown, um, that's what that's okay because the brown is darker than the blue it's not really gonna blend it's just gonna cover the blue up so that's okay if um, the blue is still wet so uh, let's see 
let's just try regular brown and see how that goes. So you can rinse off your brush, my hair, wow, and um, dry it with a paper towel. Mm. I just need a little pick-me-up snack. What's your favorite snack? Comment down below. Mine is like a nut or a seed. These are um, sunflower seeds. If you're like a nut or seed fan, give me a like on the video. Or no, comment like what your favorite nut or seed is. I would love to hear. I need to join like a nut and seed Facebook group or something. Anyways, find your brown paint. And I don't really think I mixed the brown with anything, to be honest. Um, I do like a quarter size of the brown paint. Stick with your medium brush. Um, and what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna start at the bottom of the blue and overlap with the brown. Kind of just like a nice clean line. Then once you get to the middle of your canvas, you're just gonna go, gonna go like up, make your little hill up to where the blue starts getting a little bit lighter. Make your little hill and then come down again to the bottom. That's how you'll make your little hill, okay? And then we're going to paint this um, two or three inches down. Maybe about like halfway. We'll do a two or three inch, two or three inches down. Then when you get to the hill, we're going to start going up, okay? And then all of a sudden it's going to be like only one inch of brown. Okay. So for the right side of the canvas, we're going to do two or three inches of brown. And when you get to the hill, you're going to go up and it will only be one inch of brown, one or two inches. For the for the right side of the canvas i hope that makes sense but again it's your canvas so you can do whatever you would like whatever your heart is telling you okay and then later on at the end we will go in and outline the top with black and outline the bottom with black so then the bottom of this is going to be mm, that's not a good angle this color kind of like a I don't know taupe like a gray tan um, so I'm going to use my leftover brown that I have. If you don't have any left, go ahead and get some. And we're just going to do um, that brown with some white. And we're just going to see what we get so far. And if we need to add something else, we'll go from there. So if you have white left over from anything else, I would encourage you to just use that. If not, um, let's put maybe... Mm, a dime sized circle of white on. Rinse your brush if you need to and wash it off. Okay, so.
So here is, here's your brown. You're going to take a little scoop of white to the side, a tiny scoop of brown and add it in. See what we're getting. Oh, that's pretty close. I think I want some more white in there. So I'm going to take another little scoop and keep adding. Yeah, I actually really like that. Um, it's actually pretty close. Close to what I did here. I think that's what we're going to do. So just dark brown and um, some small scoops of white until you um, find what you like. So you're just going to paint the entire rest of the canvas that color. I'm going to use my medium brush. Yeah, I really suppose you actually maybe don't need a large brush for this painting. But it's really up to you. This is just my preference. I like the medium brush. But everyone's different how they paint, so you got to do you. That's important. So again, I'm just going back and forth using both sides of my paintbrush. Probably need to just keep making more of that brown and white color. Use up some white that you had left over from some other of some other colors from earlier in the painting too, if that's the case. Okay, so I'm just going to pause the video so you don't have to watch me paint this brown. Okay, so I painted the rest of this brown. I also painted the bottom edge, like the bottom of the canvas brown. Now I'm going to dry the whole thing with a hair dryer just to make sure everything is dry so we can do... Um, the clouds, the moon, the trees, and the finishing touches, and then we're all done. Super quick, super easy painting. Um, love it. Okay, so I dried my entire canvas. Now, what comes after the background um, are the clouds. So what I did is I kind of um, outlined the very top of my clouds and the very bottom. So I can say, um, well, I want the moon. I want the moon to be in the center of my canvas. Well, maybe like above the hill and I want it to be um, on top of the pink and the blue. So if my moon is right here, if my moon is here, I kind of want, um, let's see, my moon is here. I kind of want my clouds to end right above that, like maybe a half an inch above that. So that's a good way to gauge um, where you want the bottom of your clouds to be. For the top, I want them to be maybe in the middle of the yellow to Mm, two thirds down from the yellow. So that's kind of how you want to gauge it. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfect. They're clouds. Clouds are not perfect shapes. So you can't really mess it up, right? So for the clouds, I put maybe about two, two sizes of two quarters of white. You want a lot of white and you really want to load a lot of paint onto your brush. So we're going to use your medium brush again really kind of scoop that paint on your brush because these are clouds. They're thick, they're textured, um, they're in the foreground, they're not in the background. You want them to stand out, right? <clears throat> so let me move the camera closer so you can really see. So you're gonna load it up. 
and you're just gonna kind of make these thick either U shapes U shapes for these clouds okay load your brush up again just kind of for the outline again you can't really mess this up they're clouds you're just making a bunch of wisps so if I do this in slow motion load up your brush making a U making another U whoops making another U <clears throat> okay <clears throat> so that's how we're making the first layer of our clouds and we're just gonna fill it in with you with the U stroke I don't know if that's really a thing but we're gonna call it a U stroke today okay so those are those are our clouds. Okay. Now without drawing this, you know, we might not have needed that much white paint, but I want these to be very thick. So I'm actually gonna take another scoop of this white and just go ahead because we put so much paint on our paint palette and go over them, but make sure you keep it very textured because that's very important for this painting because the background is not a texture and that's why we want, that's how this is going to stand out. Cool. Okay, so now I'm going to take some black. We don't need a ton, um, maybe put like a a dime size. A dime sized split of black. What we're gonna do is we're going to give these clouds some dimension and shape. So on the bottom of the clouds, we're just gonna kind of do that upside down U shape, but only on the bottom of the clouds, okay? And then in the middle of the clouds. So it's kind of like there's a cloud here and there's a cloud underneath it. Um, yeah, so you're gonna do it to the bottom of the clouds for the whole darn cloud. And the same thing on this side, okay? So now there's like a second cloud over here. And then, what did I do? I did another one throughout here. So there's just like all these layers of clouds. Yeah, okay. And then we're going to take some blue. And you can rinse off your brush. And I would definitely dry it off. Um, actually, before we do the blue, I want to blend in this black a little bit. So I'm going to take some white on my brush and over, just a little bit over this black, I'm just going to kind of put some more white. Just going to kind of blend it in. Wet on wet canvas blending. And if I feel like I have too much black on my brush, I'm just going to kind of, you can rinse it off or you can just wipe it off on your palette load it up with some more white again and just go over the very top u shape of that black so that way it's not like we don't want any like paint paint robots right like because we don't want it just like black white black white like we want it blended like a cloud so again put some of that white on your brush Gonna give that cloud some texture by just adding some gray gray into it there that looks much better so now we're gonna add some blue um, so when I was talking about hiding the hue earlier so we want to go and find um, this 
this dark, this deep dark blue right here. Um, so we're going to use the ultra, the dark blue, the ultramarine blue. So if you have some of that left on your um, paint palette, I suggest using that. I don't have any left, so I'm just gonna put like a tiny, maybe like half of a dime. I don't think we'll need that much for this. So like um, right here, this much. And I'm actually just gonna add it where, um, like to the bottom of the clouds again, where the black is. So I'm gonna just put a tiny bit be like this much on my brush just one side of your brush or the top of the brush and just kind of on the bottom just kind of like where where the black smudges were it's pretty abstract so it's really okay um if it doesn't look like the photograph or my painting or this painting, we just want to get some blue in here, to be honest. And we want it to blend in. So we're just going to kind of put some blue all over the place. So they're not like black and white clouds, right? So it goes with the rest of the painting. Cool. Okay, so you're probably looking at this like, what the hell is going on? Excuse me, if children are watching this, I meant to say, what the heck? Um, so now we're gonna rinse our brush and dry it. And now we're going to go in with the highlights, okay? So if you have white left over, let's use that. If you don't, put some more white on your palette, rinse your brush. So. Load your brush up with white and really get that white in there to the top, the top of the cloud. There we go, the top of the cloud. And you can see how it's not all white anymore. We have that blue in there and it looks super pretty. Get that white into the top of the cloud. Beautiful. And we still want that black in there to separate that cloud and this cloud. Perfect. Wonderful. Yeah. And if you feel like you need to rinse your brush and dry it off again, please do so. If you feel like you want to go back in and redo some of those, um, like layers on the bottom. Yeah, rock on, do it. Acrylic painting is all about layers and I love it because life is all about layers. Shocker, right? There's just so much about life that relates to art. That's why I love it, cool. So those are our clouds. Beautiful. And as you can tell, like these clouds do not look exactly the same, right? This one and this one. They look pretty different, but that's great. That's the point of art. Like we're all on this journey of life doing the same thing. Maybe we're trying to get to the same destination. I don't know, but we're all going to do it differently or we're all going to do it the same and we might still get a different um reward the journey is the reward right that's what they say anyways i don't know that's why art is so cool all right i'm gonna i'm gonna stop preaching now so um now we're gonna do our moon so if you have any white left load up your medium brush and again, like clouds, the moon is not perfect. If you have like a bottle cap or something, trace it. More power to you. If not, just put a big white blob. There you go. We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna let that dry a little bit and then we'll put the yellow on. 
While that's drying, we are going to outline in black and then we're going to do our black trees. Then we're almost done. I'm going to get my, um, I think I have a smaller brush somewhere I was talking about, like a number eight. Yes. I'm put a little more black on my palette and um, what I'm going to do is super easy and this doesn't have to be like spick and span perfect line that's the beauty of it it's just kind of abstract so you're just going to kind of take it eyeball it with your brush and put a black line between this beautiful ultramarine blue color and your um mountain so it's kind of just um distinguishing the line between the sky and the mountain. Oh, I just dropped black paint on the carpet. That's okay. I'll figure it out later. And then you're going to put another black line here. Then I think we'll move on to the trees. For the trees, I would suggest using your medium brush, your number eight brush, or number ten brush. You know what? I don't want that to come out of my security deposit, so I'm going to pause the video and clean the paint out of the carpet. Okay, I'm back. Um... So now we're going to do the trees. So as you can see in this other painting, they're literally just like abstract wisps. Like you can really do no wrong. Um, I can kind of show you the technique I used though. So basically um, we start with the one on the left. Well, to you it's the one on the right, my left. Um, I started with the tip top because it ended where the pink and the light blue meet. So you start here and it just drew a line all the way down to the bottom. And then from there I kind of just um, did some wisps. So I'm painting with like the top of my paintbrush right now. Move the camera closer so you can see. Mm, there's kind of a glare, sorry. Let's see if I can fix that. <laughs> okay, so I'm just like starting at the stem and then going out and up. So in slow motion, start at the stem, out and up. Okay, and I'm doing that on both sides. I'm just kind of doing that all over the place and once you kind of get your technique now I'm just doing it using all sides of my brush just like going all over the place maybe I want some branches that go down maybe I want some that overlap and go up okay and it's important that if your your branches are gonna go all the way off to the side that you continue and paint them on the side of your canvas too. Okay. And kind of make sure you, you show some of that negative space in the background because otherwise it's just going to be like a big black blob and people are going to be like, what is that? A big black blob? And you're going to be like, no, it's a tree. So we want the eye to immediately like view it as a tree, right? Okay, so then for the one in the middle, that one only goes up to here. <coughs> um, the lightest brown. So I'm going to immediately mark where the top of it is, make a line down. And maybe this is only the top of the tree. So it could be the top of the tree you're seeing, or it could be like a tiny little Christmas tree. 
um, whatever you want. And again, I'm going to kind of make like this U shape. So in slow motion, it's going to be like this U shape. Maybe this like V shape. Overlapping. Okay. For the one, the last one, on this side it's kind of like just half of the tree. So it goes all the way up to the clouds. So that's the top. And it's like the, the canvas kind of like goes right down the middle. So it splits the tree in half. Okay, so maybe you're just gonna do like some lines. Like if I were to make a V, like you're just gonna make like half of the V, okay? Because it's only this side of the tree. Maybe I'm gonna do some overlapping like upside down Vs for some texture. Okay. Cool. So now all we have left is the moon. Awesome. So literally you're just going to take a small, well actually I have, you probably have a ton of yellow ochre left from the sky. So rinse off your brush, dry it off, take that yellow ochre, literally just fill in your whole moon that you outlined earlier in white. Oh shoot. My moon is not going to be a perfect circle. <laughs> oh well. Okay, so to give the moon a little bit of dimension, you're going to take some white have a little leftover from before and you're just going to put it on like the bottom half so it's kind of like shiny and it's not just like such a flat circle okay maybe do a couple layers and you can do this like wet paint onto wet paint so it's kind of gonna be like um, Kind of the same like globby technique we used for the clouds and then i would suggest rinse, rinsing your brush off and drying it and then you're just going to take some leftover black and this is just to tie the moon to the rest of the canvas and you're just going to kind of outline it in black um just half of it And then from here to here, what you did not outline in black, I'm going to outline in white, a little bit more white, just to emphasize that highlight that I really want. Yeah. There. Awesome. Don't forget to sign your painting. I usually sign it on the bottom right corner, or the bottom left corner with a Sharpie marker when it's dry, but you can do whatever you like. You can let it dry. If you don't have a dog, cat, or I don't know, a small child that is um, investigative and might knock it over in a good way, um, you could dry with a hair dryer if you're worried about that or you can just let it dry so here are lovely paintings i hope you had so much fun if you have questions or comments please um comment below remember to like subscribe and share 
And thank you so much for joining me with LQ Art and our Hartman's Rock painting video. And remember to check out Schwartz and Shorts Instagram. Thank you so much, guys.